right, the NFL season is back. Week one starts tonight. Big game, Houston, Kansas City, a rematch of that nice AFC playoff game last year where Houston had that big lead. Kansas City had to make that miraculous comeback to take care of business there before they went on to their Super Bowl appearance and Andy Reid's first Super Bowl victory. Congratulations, first off, to Andy Reid. Andy Reid, one of my favorite coaches all time, obviously being an Eagles fan. My heart goes out to Andy Reid. Congrats again. I don't think there will be any comeback needed. Uh, Houston, no DeAndre Hopkins. Players like Will Fuller are going to have to step up. Deshaun Watson, the big contract. There is opportunity for this to be a backdoor cover as Kansas City is favored by 9.5. A, a pretty big spread, but I like Kansas City to come out on fire pick up right where they left off at the end of last year. I know the Super Bowl hangover, all that. I'm not buying into it with Andy Reid's team. And the Houston Texans, like I said, they might backdoor cover, but I like Kansas City to win this game, and I like them to win by 10, 13 points, something like that. So I will take the 9.5 points and pick Kansas City to cover. Second game on my list, all my spreads, by the way, are Bet365. Bet365 is where I go to do my betting. I also play a bit of DraftKings on the side as well. <laughs> Just started getting into that really this summer, so I haven't really felt that out too well yet, but we're getting there. Uh, next game on my slate, Chicago plus three at Detroit. Detroit Lions finally get a healthy Matt Stafford back. They added rookie running back Swift. See what he can do for that offense. Maybe open things up downfield a little bit more for Stafford to toss and, and hit his wide outs. Chicago, Who's it going to be? You announced Trubisky a while ago when you're supposed to be having an open competition between Nick Foles and Trubisky for your starting QB. I just think there's so many mixed messages. The Bears defense should be really good this year, but I think Detroit takes care of business and beats the Bears and will cover that three-point spread. I picked Detroit to win and cover. I actually like a lot of favorites this week, which is a little surprising to me because normally I like dogs, especially early in the season. But next game on my slate, Baltimore against Cleveland. Cleveland last year, all the all the preseason hype. I don't think they're going to be as bad as last year. I think the hype really got to their heads, and it took them half a year to get things sorted out. Baker Mayfield, OBJ, etc. on there. I, I think that Cleveland will do all right this year, but Baltimore, I, I think they just improved from last year. Lamar Jackson, probably my favorite player to watch in the NFL right now. I don't think it gets much more fun than that. Either. He's like a fucking video game if you play fantasy sports. Just having that cheat code almost where you can just have him do whatever you want and nobody can stop him. Baltimore, and they've, they've gotten faster on offense as well at the wide out position from the draft and, and whatnot. They got Dobbins, the, the rookie running back to pair up with Ingram and, and Lamar. You got a three-headed beast in the backfield. They're going to run 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 the ball down your throat and that opens up downfield for the speedy receivers including hollywood marquise brown i expect big things from baltimore they should steamroll cleveland in my opinion seven and a half points i like them to steamroll them by a couple touchdowns so there minnesota at home to green bay minnesota the vikings are two and a half point favorites they lost up on digs but i still think they're one of the more balanced teams especially in the nfc north the packers aaron Rodgers. I'm not sure how well they're going to do this year. I I, I think this is going to be a, a two-team race, Minnesota and Green Bay, right to the end for the division title. I'm going to open up in week one. I love the additions, the addition of Njaku on the Vikings' defensive side of the ball. Might take a bit of time for them to gel. They did lose a couple players as well this year, but I, I like Minnesota to win the opener at home. I think both these teams probably win against each other at home this year, so I'll take Minnesota minus 2.5 home to Green Bay. Indy, eight-point favorites over Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Indy is one of the best O-lines in the league. They had Phillip Rivers to start instead of Jacoby Brissett after the whole Andrew Luck incident last year at the start of the year with his uh, a sudden retirement or, or surprising retirement at his young age. Um, they also added running back Taylor to the, to the team. The Jags, they've just been selling off all their first three-round First, second, and third round picks over the since 2016. I think the fire sale it, it keeps going until they're completely dry and have nothing but young kids. I think they're going to be a bad team. I'm going to be picking against them a lot this year, unless they come out and show me something in the first four weeks. I will take the favorites over them almost on a weekly basis, or at least that's my pre-start to the season judgment. Indy, 
I'll take the eight points and for them to win. Now the Raiders now in Las Vegas on the road in Carolina to start the season. Three point favorites the Raiders are over the Panthers. Panthers to me are the most confusing team in the NFL this year. I love Christian McCaffrey. You never know what he can do, especially if you're a fantasy player. The, the kid's phenomenal. He's the first pick off the board every single year, the last few years in most leagues that I have played in anyways. And I, I just don't know. They're so confusing. And Las Vegas at least has a good O-line. They've got some good speed with the addition of rugs in the draft. They've got a pretty nice team. And I will take Las Vegas to cover the spread here because... I just don't know what to make of the Panthers this year. I need to see them for a few weeks before I'm really going to have a decision on which way I want to lean with or against them on a week-to-week -week basis. So I'm going to start out with what I know is a little more consistent, especially during COVID. I'm going to stick to teams that maybe are uh, went through less changes, less coaching changes, bringing back a lot of the same roster, etc., especially early on in the season. Um, so the Raiders to win the game and cover the three-point spread. Next game, Miami Dolphins at New England. The Patriots, six and a half point home favorites. No Tom Brady. He's off to Tampa. Cam Newton now to Carolina. He's into New England to start at quarterback and name the captain, Bill Belichick. And Miami is under a rebuild. I think their shocking of the Patriots ends this year. I think Cam Newton and Belichick march into my march in against Miami at Gillette Stadium and take care of business. They'll cover this by more than a touchdown. I think they're absolutely going to destroy Miami in week one and New England will get off to a good start. New York Jets, six and a half point road underdogs into Buffalo. Buffalo, just a, a phenomenal D. They added Stefan Diggs to their offense to give more options for Josh Allen at the QB position, who is a mobile quarterback. The, the Jets have who? Le'Veon Bell, Frank Gore, uh, Darnold at QB, and now they got, what, Perryman in there at wide receiver. So they basically got four players on their team. I don't know what they're going to do. Their defense is going to be all right, but I like Buffalo to win this by a touchdown. They'll cover the spread and win this game. Philly on the road in Washington to play the Washington. Just a complete fucking mess of a football team. The Eagles, five and a half point favorites. They got a couple O-line issues with some injuries there in the preseason and whatnot. Jason Peters is sliding over to tackle. So you never know what's going to happen, but Washington is such a mess. I think Philly should go in there and win this game. It's something like, I don't know, like 20 to 10 or something. Because I think Washington's D, especially their D-line, will be able to pressure Wentz. And unless you can get off a lot of RPOs and screens and, and short passes and whatnot to Goddard and Ertz, etc., I, I, I think Philly should cover the spread easy, maybe like a, a, a 24-14, 27-17, 27-14 sort of game here. Philly winning and covering. Seattle Seahawks at Atlanta. Now, these are two more teams I'm a little confused about Atlanta, really. Like, it, it's so hard to, not to pick a team with Julio Jones and, and whatnot on it, especially when he's such a phenomenal player, phenomenal receiver. I, I just think that... DK Metcalf and Russell Wilson are going to have a special year this year. Pete Carroll, usually the Seahawks get off to a slow start, but I like them to go into Atlanta and take care of business in week one, cover the spread, come out of here with like a field goal victory, winning by three. LA Chargers at Cincinnati. Joe Burrow in his debut. Will it be good enough to take down the Chargers who have a good, good defense? I really don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know. So I'm just going to go with Burrow. So please, this one, it's just strictly a gut pick. I'm going to roll with Joe Burrow and think that Cincinnati can be at home and shock the Chargers in week one, especially with the Chargers getting rid of Phillip Rivers, blaming him for his, him and his interceptions for the reasons of their non-success. And I just think that they're playing the blame game. And I think that this is a good spot for Cincinnati to jump out and get the rookie his first win in his first game as QB. So I will take the Bengals to not only cover the three points, but I will take them to win the game outright in the upset. Next, Arizona at San Francisco. San Francisco, seven point favorites. But they got Debo and Ayuk. They're number one and two receivers as far as i've seen on their depth charts so far this season this off season 
who are doubtful or questionable for the game. In Arizona, they added Hopkins, they added Chandler Jones, they have four legit wideouts there. They got, uh, uh, oh shoot, it was Eckler, Eckler, a, a running back. Like, Arizona, Kyler Murray's got some weapons this year, so Kingsbury, you, you, let's see what that offense can do. I, I think they go into San Fran and shock the 49ers in week one. I think if anybody's suffering from last year's playoffs, it might be the 49ers who have a bit of a hangover and start the season a little slow. But don't get me wrong, I still love the 49ers to do well and be a playoff team this year. Um, Tampa Bay, three and a half point underdogs in New Orleans. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, this is the first time I believe in NFL history you've had both starting quarterbacks over the age of 40 years old. Who will come out on top? I think, like I mentioned earlier in my points, when you have two good teams loaded with weapons on the offensive side of the ball, both these teams are full of weapons, experienced, great, great, great quarterbacks, NFL Hall of Fame quarterbacks in Brady and Breeze. I'm, I'm just going to go. I've got to pick New Orleans because they've been together. They're still the same. Tom Brady, COVID, going to Tampa, a new team. I'm sure they're going to just say, okay, Tom, play it. But how much do them receivers and whatnot, Evans, Godwin, all the other offensive players, offensive linemen, they need to get familiar with Brady. I think it's going to take the Bucks a few weeks to gel before we really see or can really fairly judge Brady and the move to Tampa in any way, positive or negatively, regardless of how the, the first week starts. So I'm going to pick New Orleans to win and cover the three and a half points in this game for those reasons. Dallas Cowboys, LA Rams. Two of the biggest disappointments last year in a lot of people's minds. Mine included, I thought Dallas and Philly would both get 10-11 wins last year and they both were scraping and fighting and dogging just for a respectable record to squeak into the playoffs as division winners. It was... Just an embarrassment from both teams last year, in my opinion. But we're talking Cowboys-Rams in this game. The Rams were another big disappointment last year as well. I don't know who is going to win this game. Two good offenses. Uh, the Rams clearly the better defense. Dallas has a just, I, oh, they got holes in their defense, especially their secondary. That's the one scary part about Dallas this year is I, I know they're going to put up a lot of points. And if you're a fantasy player, you're going to love picking Cowboys players because you only pick offensive players and they got tons of weapons. Dak, Cooper, Prescott, that, the rookie, uh, they drafted. Oh, his name's escaping me right now. Oh, my goodness. But hey, the list goes on and on. I, I think this game's going to come down to the end, come down to a field goal. I think Dallas is going to win, but uh, the Rams will cover the three-point spread. I think it's kind of Dallas by a field goal in that three. It's going to end up being a push, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick on this one uh, with a three-point spread because of the outcome I expect to get in this game. Uh, second to last game, the first Monday night are Pittsburgh at the New York Giants. New York Giants are a mess. Pittsburgh, the better team, the better coach, the better everything in this game, except for one spot, and that is Saquon Barkley. And can Barkley control the run game and control the clock enough to keep this game within the six points? Pittsburgh is a six-point favorite. I don't know. I, I, he might be able to, or the Giants might get a backdoor cover on this one, so watch out for that, especially if you like the backdoor covers or hate getting burned by them. You might want to take the Giants, but I'm going to roll with Pittsburgh because I think they're just the better team all around except for one player, and that one player is Saquon Barkley, and I just don't think he will be able to do enough to keep the Steelers' offense off the field enough. Tennessee, two-and-a-half-point road favorites into Denver. Von Miller, the nasty news this week. He will be out, possibly for the season. You got Chubb, who's just returning. This will be his first game back, first time back from his torn ACL, I believe it was. Uh, that defense banged up. Lock at quarterback. I don't know that I really like or trust Lock. I think Tennessee goes in this. Denver's weakest part of their whole team, their, their whole scheme, is their run D. Derrick Henry, I think he has a field day. I think Tennessee wins this going away. I think they win by a touchdown, 10 points. I'm going to take Tennessee to cover the 2.5 and, and win the game. That's my week one, week one NFL 2020 COVID picks. Peace.